This video is going to discuss osmotic pressure. So let's imagine we have the following experimental setup. So we have some type of uh, liquid solution here. On the left, we have pure water. On the right, we have a solution with water and some solute dissolved in it at some sort of concentration. So naturally, if we just remove the barrier here, then the solution would dissolve into the water and they would equal out the concentration of the solute, the water would be at an equal level, and things would just go on from there. But instead, what we have is what is called a semi-permeable membrane. This membrane allows water to flow through the membrane, but it doesn't allow the solute to flow through. So what happens in this type of a situation is a process called osmosis. The water is going to prefer to dissolve across the barrier from the pure water into the solution, and it's going to do so until the solute reaches a certain diluteness and there's, a, and there's a higher amount of solution on the right relative to the left. So notice that this does so even to different water, even to different heights of the water column. So usually the atmospheric pressure is going to force these water columns to be at equal height because any discrepancy in height is going to result in a higher pressure on this side than on this side. But in fact, this is what happens if we have such a semi-permeable membrane. And over time, the water will flow until we have a less dilute solution over here. And there is an equilibrium developed where there's some osmotic pressure, where this side is higher than this side. So as a result, there's a higher pressure on the, in the solution than there is in the pure water. So our goal here is to describe why this process occurs and what this pressure is going to be at the end of this process. Okay, so we'll start with the chemical potential of pure water, which is our solvent, indicated by subscript 1 here. That's a function of temperature and pressure. So our chemical potential of our pure water on the left, in order for this to be an equilibrium and for water not to flow from one side to the other, it has to be equal to the chemical potential that occurs in the solution on the right, which is at the same temperature, but it's at a pressure of P plus pi, pressure, external pressure plus the osmotic pressure, and at the activity of the water over on this side. Okay, so our chemical potential of the pure water is equal to the chemical potential of the water uh, un, is equal to the chemical potential of pure water at that temperature and pressure plus pi plus RT times the natural log of its activity coefficient. So this is our expression for uh, what is the activity of our water in solution at this pressure over on the right side. So if we subtract from both sides um, some things here and rearrange, we get the chemical potential of the pure water at P plus pi minus the chemical potential of the pure water at atmospheric pressure is equal to minus RT times log of A1. So the difference in chemical pressure and chemical potential of, wa of pure water at these different pressures has to be equal to minus RT times the natural log of the activity of the water in the solution on the right here. Okay, so we're going to look at the integral to find this uh, difference in chemical potential. We're going to look at the integral from P to P plus pi of the partial derivative of the chemical potential of pure water with respect to pressure, integrated with respect to pressure. So the partial derivative of chemical potential with respect to pressure is going to be equal to the partial molar volume of whatever uh, solvent we're interested in. So this is equal to the integral from atmospheric pressure to P plus pi of the partial molar volume of the pure solvent integrated over, over pressure. And if we assume that this uh, molar volume of the solvent is nearly independent of pressure, 
which liquids are fairly incompressible. Water doesn't change its molar volume much over moderate, de over moderate changes in pressure. We assume that this is constant. We pull it outside the integral, and then it's just the integral from p to p plus pi of dp. So that's p plus pi minus p. So our result of our integral is v bar 1 star times pi, the molar volume of the pure solvent times the osmotic pressure. Okay, so yes, as I said, we're assuming that that's constant versus some moderate change in pressure from our atmospheric to the osmotic pressure. Okay, so the, uh, this is this side of our equation here. So the osmotic pressure times the molar volume of the pure solvent, which is water in this case, is equal to minus RT times the natural log of the activity of our water in solution. So we'll use our standard trick that we use in this chapter. The natural log of the, of the solvent is approximately, the natural log of the activity of the solvent is approximately the natural log of the mole fraction of the solvent because the mole fraction of the solvent approaches its activity as the, as the mole fraction approaches one. The solution becomes ideal under a Raoul's law standard state as the solvent approaches a mole fraction of one. The mole fraction of the solvent plus the mole fraction of the solute sum up to one. So chi one plus chi two equals one or chi one equals one minus chi two. So this is natural log of one minus chi two. The Taylor series for natural log of 1 minus x evaluated at x equals 0. The first non-zero term is minus x2. So we get a minus chi2 here for this Taylor series if we're in a dilute solution where chi2 is approximately 0. Chi2 is equal to the mole fraction of the solute is equal to number of moles of the solute divided by number of moles of solvent plus number of moles of solute. If it's dilute, then the number of moles of solvent is much, much greater than the number of moles of solute, and N1 plus N2 is just equal to N1, and this is approximately N2 over N1. All right, so what we have here is we have pi, the osmotic pressure, times the molar volume of our pure solvent equals minus RT times minus chi2, natural log of A1 is approximately minus chi2, so which is equal to the gas constant times temperature times the number of moles of the solute, sorry, natural gas constant times temperature times number of moles of solute divided by number of moles of solvent, making that substitution. So solving for the osmotic pressure, we have pi equals RT N2 over N1 times V bar one star. So the number of the number of moles of our solvent times the molar volume of our solvent is just equal to the total volume of our solvent. So we have RT times N2 over V1 star. So this is the number of moles of solute divided by the total volume of solution, which is the definition of molarity. Molarity is the number of moles of solute per volume of solution. So our osmotic pressure then is going to equal the molarity of our solute times the gas constant times the temperature. So once again, the amount of osmotic pressure that results from water diffusing across a semi-permeable membrane from pure water into a water solution with some solute develops into some equilibrium osmotic pressure, which is dependent on the molarity of our solute times RT, but not upon the identity of that solute.